Welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day. We're going to jump in and take a look at the markets. They've been uh, all over the place here last couple of days. Markets were down. The Dow was down about 500 points, everything about 2% across the board at one point today. And they did come back and close pretty much flat on the day. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in the charts. No real serious news right now. And we are at a point in the markets where you know headline risk is serious. So any kind of headline news like the S&P um, falling into bear market territory temporarily, uh, the Fed doing something silly, the war escalating, things like that can really put uh, stocks into a tumble fast. So right now they're just kind of unwinding, working their ways to the lows uh, and you know continuing to tail off. So this is the hour and let's go ahead and look at the daily here. And this is the Dow Jones over the last few days, really going back to the 21st of April. So pretty much mid-April to where we are today, just kind of working its way down. And again, the key is once these levels were taken out with a new lower low, it's just been lower highs and lower lows. And that's kind of how markets work their way down. Uh, it's unless there's something serious and you can go back on these charts. This is the NASDAQ, a little bit more steeper in terms of what the NASDAQ's doing. But again, this was your last, you know, once you start taking out these lows and this last major low here, then you can pretty much expect more continuation to the downside. And uh, the S&P as well, let's see where S&P, if it entered bear market territory, and they're defining bear market territory, traditional markets, the definition is 20%. And the NASDAQ was down, or S&P was down in tw the 20% range and snapped back up to close at about 3901 out of bear market territory by a hair. And um, you know that's a lot of technical settings there that are triggered to buy on that level. Uh, but again, there's just, you know, it's just a cliff that it's falling over, continuing to put in lower lows and lower highs. And if you just go back and look at times in the past in terms of this, you know, this was the March 2020 pandemic, much more steeper of a sell-off because nobody knew what was going on. But when you go back and look at these other events like 2018, when the Fed uh, did a number on the markets, all of the buildup in anticipation to it, and then unwinding and then final capitulation right here. And that was a drop of, we've looked at it before, but we'll just go back. And that was right at the bear market line and it bounced. So this did come back because the Fed pivoted. The difference right now is there is no Fed pivot right here. So let's go back and look again um, in 2009. Same thing here where the markets are looking a lot like this structure here where these lows get taken out on the major market structure. You put in these lower lows, nice uh, bear market rally, drops put in a lower low, another lower high, big sell off here. That's when the big banking crisis collapse happened. I remember watching all this. Lehman Brothers was fa failing. Bear Stearns was failing. Everybody was calling Warren Buffett because he was the biggest check in the game and uh, the governments were stepping in. So once that started to happen, some of the banks started to get you know bailouts and the government started stepping in. It kind of leveled off and then worked itself down to another low. So if you compare these areas, you know this looks more like Bitcoin right now than it does um, uh, you know, the current NASDAQ pricing right now or S&P pricing right now. Uh, so let's go back and kind of take a look at it and see, see where we're at. This is more of a steady unwind. So we haven't seen that big capitulation moment in any of the markets yet. This is just normal standard unwinding. So you can see these tops, how the markets put these similar tops in, had a nice bounce after that first low, then continues down. At some point, that capitulation will come in in the markets where you will find the bottom. And uh, unless and until the Fed indicates they're going to pull the foot off the gas, then uh, that's just not going to happen. So uh, we're looking for more downward pressure. And then ultimately, there'll be a capitulation moment. And generally, something's going to happen to trigger that. The biggest, you know, nobody knows what the risks are out there, like banking failure in 2008-9, the Fed uh, pulling the foot off the gas in 2018, and then pivoted when credit markets started to crack. And that's a big risk out there right now are the credit markets and debt markets. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that, see what's going on. The bond market has a lot of pressure right now as well. So we'll just have to watch and see. Those are the types of things that you know pose systemic risk to the system. Cryptocurrency does not. Uh, you know, current market caps on cryptos are you know about 1.5 trillion. You know, that's nothing. You know, when you compare it to uh, gold or the stock market, uh, you know, market caps. Um, 
you know, so the entire crypto market can just evaporate and it won't really affect traditional markets much. You'll see a little bit of a downward pull on it, but that's not something that could create a massive um, macro systemic crisis like the banking crisis did. That was hundreds of trillions of dollars levered up through the system. AIG was failing the largest. Uh, they had the largest holdings out there that people just couldn't even co comprehend in the trillions that was on the verge of failing. So there was a lot of things going on in the financial markets through the banking system, the housing market, all that back in 2008 and 9. So this is very different. This is just the Fed pulling the foot off the gas and telling markets that, you know, this mega bubble that we've been in since 2008 and 9, uh, you know, it just has to stop. And that's what happens is, you know, markets run in cycles. There's too much inflation. And until uh, those things start to rectify, you can't really start looking for a bottom. Same thing on Bitcoin. Uh, we have this new low that price on the daily has just been kind of bouncing in right now, almost lining up perfectly, just kind of ranging sideways here, trying to uh, determine if this, this is ultimately going to, uh, you know, stay a support that $28,000, $29,000 level, really $28,700, $28,600. If it breaks that level, then you can look for some more downside. So it'll be interesting to see if it holds like it did back here last summer, that price held. So my assumption was this was going to hold. I didn't expect it to get down and start closing, you know, below 30,000. I thought that 30,000 level would hold, but, you know, it wicked down to 25. It's bouncing at 28 and a half. So if that, you know, if that level does get lost, then you can expect it to go down and start testing some of these lower levels. And again, headline risk is everything. Systemic uh, risk in the markets is everything. And if you get a big market event, it could take, uh, it could take Bitcoin down with it. When you look at it on the hourly, you know, it's just, just a real sideways action going on, kind of bouncing in this range, uh, which is a nice little trading range for people that are trading, uh, running in that, you know, six to 7% range on Bitcoin. Ethereum's doing the same thing, but some of the altcoins, uh, the large caps and everything kind of running along the same route. The dailies on the alt caps are looking a lot worse. They look like they really want to go down and test some of these uh, 2021 lows. So uh, I would just be on the lookout for that. And, um, you know, just be careful out there because uh, there's a lot of manipulation in the markets. There's a lot of things going on right now in the economy. And there's a lot of headline risk out there that could potentially create, you know, big losses really fast. So you still want to be on the defensive. The weekends, uh, they can be kind of tricky. Let's take a look at the last couple of weekends. So the last one was on the 13th. So let's, uh, we've got this on the daily. Let's zoom in and let's look at the 13th, uh, Friday the 13th that came in right here. So we had an up weekend. So Friday the 13th was a small up day, Saturday and Sunday continued up, and then that Monday down. Um, so that was Friday the 13th, these three up days right here, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, before that, uh, then we were at the sixth. So let's look at where the sixth was. So this was Thursday the fifth, Friday the sixth, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So just straight down from there. So the question is, we finished. if we finish down on uh, Friday today, are we going to continue down Saturday, Sunday, Monday, like we did there? And then back before that would be the 29th. So let's take it. Here's the 29th. So Friday, Saturday, uh, down, Sunday, Monday up, Tuesday down, Wednesday up, then down the rest of the week. Then we'll go back and look at before that was the 22nd. So here is uh, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the 22nd. So down Friday, Saturday, up Monday, Tuesday, down um, Wednesday. And then you can see the rest of the story there. And then before that was the 15th. So let's take a look at April the 15th. So that's right in here in this sideways range here. Price was up a little bit on the 15th, down Saturday, Sunday, a little bit bounced and then down. So no clear pattern to really uh, track, but you can see weekends haven't been huge. Like a lot of people, people say, watch out for weekends, except this one in here that, um, that May the 6th, that was a big drop, that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right here in this area. So uh, coming off of this sideways consolidation, big drop of the weekend into Monday, Tuesday. So this actually started back on May 4th. Um, so 4th uh, would have been, the 6th was Friday right here, Thursday, Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, it was an up day. Wednesday, down Thursday, down Friday, down Saturday, down Sunday, down Monday. Tuesday was that bounce down uh, Wednesday, Thursday down, Friday, Saturday, Sunday up, Monday down, Tuesday up, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, here we are. So the question is, 
Are we going to see this again following this consolidation like we saw in this area here? Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. So uh, be careful. Um, there's not a lot of volume on weekends, but um, you know the last couple of weekends, other than this one, haven't been real eventful. This was a bad one, uh, and anything can happen. That's the thing: is that you know where we're at in the markets right now uh, doesn't take a whole lot to create a, you know uh, a big situation. So you have to be on the defense. You have to protect yourself, and um, just kind of hedge the downside and just be expecting more downside. Uh, you know, so that you'll have the funds available to take advantage of the next bull market uh, if and when things turn around. And uh, until we reach a bottom, which we haven't because the Fed has more work to do, inflation has not been tamed yet, we're just getting started. Uh, so definitely in traditional markets, we still have another leg down, definitely minimal, another leg down. Uh, and crypto generally is going to follow suit. Definitely the altcoins, Bitcoin, we'll just have to wait and see it's holding up at this level against the markets continuing to decline, but sometimes Bitcoin can lag the markets. So just keep uh, keep that in mind, be aware. And uh, it just is what it is. It's a consolidation, bottom finding, ranging kind of thing. Uh, I don't think we have found our bottom confirmation yet. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And uh, I will see you on the next video.